Hello, I wanted to give an update on my MD-11 project for Flight Gear. I made a bunch of improvements since the last update. Uh, too many to cover in this video, but I wanted to, I guess, at least talk about uh, some of the bigger ones. The biggest change you'll see here is that the screens now have a custom font. Uh, I went through a lot of work to uh, create this font and apply it to all the screens, which required reworking every single text object due to alignment issues with the old font. And, uh, but I think it came out really good. Um, there's still a couple tweaks I need to make, but I'm really happy with how this font came out. I also was able to force the default navigation display to use the new font. Obviously, this screen will be replaced once the flight plan page in the MCDU is working. I'm going to replace this with a custom screen, but for now, at least, it's using the new font. Uh, we have a couple other things I want to talk about with the DUs. Um, obviously, I've made a bunch of fixes. There were various things that needed to be tweaked for accuracy. A couple things were the wrong uh, shape or size and, or aligned incorrectly. That's all been corrected. Um, it's a continuous effort to improve the way the screens look. We also have a bunch of new options. Um, the first one here I'll show is we have the option for the single queue flight director. Um, if you have a UPS or a couple of airlines use the single queue flight director, that's now here. So you can see that's how uh, the flight director looks with the single queue um, on the uh, PFD if you have that option enabled. Um, also, I may have showed this before, but we have the option for the two different types of rising runways. Um, in this case, you can see that uh, it swaps where the radio altimeter is because uh, without this option checked, this is your rising runway indication. And with this option checked, your rising runway indication is part of the ILS system here. So if I set a frequency there, you'll see there it is. That's the rising runway when you have the T-bar checked. The next thing I wanted to show is for the EAD and SD. Uh, we have the option for tape style gauges. I'm using the Pratt & Whitney engines right now, and uh, actually no Pratt & Whitney's were ever delivered with tape style engines. Um, however, these are obviously here for the GEs as well, but you'll have N1 here instead of EPR. And uh, so this option is now available for use. The second thing is uh, to swap around the EAD dial options here. Uh, this was the basic factory option. However, some airlines had N1 and EGT reversed, so that option is now available if you want it or prefer it that way. Okay, I think that's about it for the major stuff with the display units. Um, we have a bunch of other small changes to various systems and corrections to the auto flight system and more. Um, I've done a lot of work on the MCDU regarding the alignment of the various text items on the screen. Let's go to a different page. Everything is now aligned in a more grid-like fashion instead of arbitrarily. So uh, the alignment is much better and it means that uh, the way that these various text objects look is very close to the real MCDU, so I'm really happy about that. It's not perfect, there's a couple little issues still to resolve, but uh, much better than what it was before. Let's see, thrust limits here, that's new, which now shows all the thrust limits available. And the reason I used Pratt & Whitney engines is to show the selection of engine limits. You can now select via the 62 and 60k options via this page. So if you need a little more thrust, you can select the higher thrust limit here in the MCDU. The default is 60K. I do want to point out that if you set a flex temperature, this forces the engines to 60K. It is not allowed to derate in 62K. I don't know the reason, but that's how it is. You can also force and override the thrust limits themselves via this page. So I could press MCT here. You'll see now it's boxed in white. We're now forcing the MCT thrust limit. Obviously then you can go back here and hit select auto and it will go back to automatic. So you'll see when we rotate here, you'll see that now heading 190 has appeared on the FMA. This is the auto flight system visually confirming that it has captured the heading. Let's go ahead and just engage it here. And if we want to then go to a different heading, just like before, we can set whatever heading we want, pull the knob, and it will follow that heading. So that's about all I have for now. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, there's a lot more that was changed in the aircraft that I just simply don't have time to show. But I hope you enjoyed, and have a good day.